In this video, I'm going to talk about theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. Yield, in general, is referring to the amount of product that is made in a chemical reaction. The theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that could be made if everything went perfectly. The actual yield is the amount of product that is actually made. And the percent yield is just a comparison of the two. It's calculated by taking the actual yield, dividing that by the theoretical yield, and multiplying by 100 to make it a percent. Now the theoretical yield being the maximum amount of product, this is a number that we calculate. So it's like a prediction. And it's calculated from the limiting reactant. And it's just a stoichiometry calculation. The actual yield can't be calculated because it is the actual amount of product that is made. So the actual yield is determined by measuring it in the lab. To get the actual yield, you have to actually perform the reaction and collect your product and measure it out. If you're doing a problem on paper, the actual yield has to be provided to you on paper. But it can't be calculated. In a theoretical yield problem or a percent yield problem, because these are just versions of stoichiometry problems, you definitely will always see a balanced chemical equation, or if one is not present, you have to, to write that equation and provide it. One thing that you'll notice about theoretical and percent yield problems is that you'll be given a lot of information about the reactants as well as the products. Like in this particular problem, we're given a quantity of the reactant carbon, we're given some information about the reactant O2, and we're also given information about our product CO2. So let's take all of these numbers and just kind of write them underneath each one of the chemicals in the equation so we have it for quick reference. The problem tells us that we have 3.74 grams of carbon. It tells us that we have excess O2. We'll talk about what that means in a second. And the problem tells us 11.34 grams of CO2. So the first, let's talk about the excess O2. Whenever you see the term excess in one of these types of problems, this is just a hint that the problem is giving you, letting you know that this particular reagent is not the limiting reactant. Excess means exactly what it sounds like. It's just there in excess quantity. So we have more than enough O2. Because it's not the limiting reactant, that means just by default that the carbon is the limiting reactant. And um, then let's talk about the 11.34 grams of CO2. This quantity of CO2, this is the actual yield. Remember the actual yield is a number that either you measure yourself in the lab or it is provided to you in the problem if you're doing something on paper. So 11.34 grams is our actual yield. Now this problem is asking us to calculate the percent yield. This is the equation that we use to calculate percent yield. And we already have half of what we need to solve that problem. We know the actual yield. So all we have to calculate in this problem is the theoretical yield. And then we can plug both of those in to get the percent yield. The theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product calculated from the limiting reactant. We know that the limiting reactant is the carbon, 3.74 grams. So let's start by writing out that 3.74 grams of carbon. And basically all that we're gonna be doing here is a conversion from carbon to CO2 to figure out what the maximum amount of CO2 is that we can make. So this is just a stoichiometry problem. And I'm gonna make a note here that our plan is just to convert from grams of carbon to grams of CO2. So we wanna read this problem um, something like, how many grams of CO2 can we make from 3.74 grams of carbon? So we're ready to go ahead and um, first start by converting out of the units grams of carbon. 
And the only thing that we can convert into is moles of carbon using the weight of carbon atom from the periodic table, 12.011 grams. That step gets us into moles of carbon. Our next step is to do a mole to mole conversion. So we're gonna convert from moles of carbon so that those units can cancel, convert into units of moles CO2, which is what we're trying to figure out. Looking at the balanced equation, we see that the relationship between carbon and CO2 is one to one. And then our last step is to convert into grams of CO2. One mole of CO2 is 44 grams of CO2. And again, we just get that number by adding up the molecular weight of the CO2. We have um, 12 for the carbon and 16 for each of the oxygens. 12 plus 32 is 44 grams per mole. And this last step cancels out our moles of CO2. And so we're ready for the calculator to figure out exactly how many grams of CO2 we are theoretically going to make in this reaction. So we're going to basically just do all the math that we set up right here, 3.74 divided by 12 times 44. This is our theoretical yield, 13 point seven grams of co2 we'll make a note that this is theoretical so now we're ready for the percent yield calculation using this equation right here we're going to do actual divided by theoretical the percent yield is our actual divided by the theoretical times 100 the actual yield, which is what was given to us in the problem, 11.34. The theoretical yield that we just calculated, 3.71, multiply by 100. And we get 82.71%. There aren't any units on this um, in the equation. We do have units of grams, but you see that they cancel each other out. So it's just 82.71%.